So our next speaker um, is Tiffany Getty, who uh, has just been moderating our multicultural education segment. Um, Tiffany is uh, indefatigable. She is a full-time chemistry teacher in a public high school, Wellsboro High School. She also is getting a doctorate <laughs> in her spare time at Wilkes University in Pennsylvania. Um, she was a presenter at Voices last year, and this year she's been elevated to co-chair. So a lot of, um, you know, if you, if you like the mix of presentations that you're seeing today, that is uh, in large part due to her efforts. Um, but now to focus back on her doctoral program, she is, uh, she is still in the somewhat early stages. She needs to write a dissertation for that degree. And she's been starting to brainstorm some things she might look into. So she's going to tell us about some, some early thoughts. And I think she's really excited to get feedback from us, uh, the audience, on what we think is most interesting and also what we think is most feasible for a single doctoral student to do. So with that, uh, I will turn it over to Tiffany. Tiffany, thank you for, for all of this. Yeah, um, it's been a great morning so far. Um, and so I have um, a couple kids out there that I'm supposed to give a special shout out to, and especially, hi, mom. Um, she is registered. Um, but I'm gonna actually talk briefly just about some dissertation topics. I did warn my students this will be the most boring presentation of the entire day. So um, I'll get started. Here we go. Uh, so I live in Wellsboro, PA. I put my email up there in case you would like to uh, shoot me an email. And um, like Greg said, my day job, I'm a high school chemistry teacher. My night job, I'm a doctoral student at Wilkes University. Don't worry, 2018 AP Chem class, your picture's coming up next. They just sent it to my email. Um, and in my spare time, I like to uh, relax when I can, spend some time with my family, make some pizza in my brick oven, um, and also um, do a little pet training if I have the time. So I have um, a couple of pictures here. Uh, some of these pictures are of myself and my family, but you can also see I'm very passionate about my students also being part of my family here, too. So I have a, an older class. These guys are now in college. I'll talk about them later. And then I have a class from last year, some of them who are seniors in high school right now, some of them who are freshmen in college, and um, they're actually tuning in, too, I think, a little bit. And then here is my current class who just sent me a picture uh, I hope that they're going to work on their lab after this about pressure, which I can come up with a song with by Queen. Um, so we'll talk about that tomorrow. And maybe uh, JT can join us. He's over in Penn State, not too far away. So there they are. And um, hopefully they are, uh, I know that they're on the Twitter feed. Bob has told me they're all over the YouTube channel. So that's great. And I encourage you guys, if you'd like to fill out the survey, you can also do that, that's fine. Um, and so, all right, so here's how I got started. Um, I started to write and perform songs as a way to inspire students to learn about chemistry. I first started watching some YouTube stuff, um, but then I realized that it would be much more impressive if I could actually perform it. Um, and so I'm a terrible singer. Um, but I started to actually create my own material as song parodies and sing it. And my husband mistakenly bought me a karaoke machine um, for my classroom. And in the end, I decided to give kids an exchange for a test grade that they could actually write me a song to demonstrate their chemical knowledge. And this went over fabulously. I've gotten some really high quality songs, um, some better than what I could have written or performed especially. And uh, in my other topic in life where I'm a doctoral student, last summer I had to actually contact a researcher in the field that I was interested in looking into a, a paper or a dissertation for. And the person I ended up calling was Greg Crowther. And that's how this all got started. Um, and so I had a presentation last year in Voices, and then this year I've worked with Greg throughout the year as the co-chair of the conference. Uh, it's been an amazing experience. I've learned a lot, and um, I'm happy to be here today. 
So one of the reasons that I am trying to do this is because I, uh, you know, I'm often thinking what makes me passionate. They say you have to marry the topic that you do a dissertation on. And so um, why not? So I think it sounds great. I'm passionate about both. And I'm certain that there's a valid connection between the two. And um, I also think that music can really help people um, with respect to ways that they might struggle with other types of learning. But overall, everybody loves music. It's part of what, what both JT and Lamar were saying. It's part of the human condition and the human spirit. We celebrate with music um, at all kinds of ceremonies, whether they be happy or sad or um, you know, an accomplishment or a rite of passage. And so music is definitely ingrained into human society and human behavior. And I think it's a great way to inspire people. And so I'm going to ask that if you are interested, I have a Google form that has five questions to it. And I'm going to present um, three topics. And I'm going to ask for your input regarding the topic. And this could be with respect to, do you think like the methodology is um, appropriate? It could be, you know, it's fine if you say, I don't think that's going to work. But if you would like to go to the shortened URL for the Google form, feel free to fill it out. You don't need to fill out an email or anything. You can simply just log in um, using that shortened URL code. And you're welcome to do it later too if, if now is not a convenient time. But it's goo.gl backslash capital Y, capital D, I, capital Y, S, uh, capital X. And so, um, you're welcome to do it during the presentation or afterwards. All right, let's get started. So the dissertation, um, definitely a challenge. Many of you who are sitting here today have gone through this, and I'm currently in the beginning stages. At this point, I have no specific topic, but I'm hoping that the great people within Voices can guide me, and they certainly have thus far. Um, so I'm looking for any knowledge you might have regarding research, regarding possible opportunities or challenges, or anything you might find interesting in the process. All right, so now let's go to topic number one. And at the end of this, I'll ask for your comments. But my first topic that I am thinking about um, is teachers' perceptions about the true effects of music as a learning tool. So we often say that um, music is an effective learning tool, but it's often used for younger age children to learn their ABCs or what we would later on consider maybe something silly. Um, and the, there tends to be two informal opinions about this. Uh, sometimes people think that music is just a fun activity at the older levels, but it doesn't really address those state standards that we have to learn with respect to secondary education and science and math. And then you have another group or another camp that really do think music is truly an engaging activity, and they do genuinely believe that it can indeed have the ability to really teach those state standards. And so, and obviously there's probably people in between, but um, these are the two common camps that sort of get set up at the high school or the secondary level. And so at this point, there has not been a lot of formal research with, with respect to the way that teachers at this level truly perceive the benefits of music. Right now, it's very informal and very opinionated. And so the goal of this study with respect to this topic would be to determine the degree to which secondary science teachers or math teachers uh, find music to really be an effective tool for teaching and learning. And the second goal would be how well that actually uh, indeed addresses those state standards. So things that we normally talk about with respect to lecture, how well does music actually do that? Is it a good exchange? Do people think it can work or does, does it really not work? Um, and so the setup of this particular um, study would be to gather a group of secondary teachers who teach the same subject, um, preferably somebody like myself, like chemistry, 
uh, and then provide these teachers with a previously recorded STEM song of a specific concept and topic, such as chemical reactions, uh, the lyrics and assignment task and a rubric that was used to evaluate this assignment. And I could provide them with all of this, whether it's my songs or student generated songs that were pre recorded. And then have teachers basically evaluate the musical assignment with respect to the degree uh, in which it is either an effective tool for learning um, and, or, an, and excuse me, an effective tool to address the required state standards. So let's take a look at the data that might be proposed for this one. So I'm thinking of using, if I were to choose this, um, some type of survey with respect to like a Likert scale item where teachers would rate both the degree to which they believe the musical assignment served as an effective tool for learning and also um, that it served as an effective tool to address the state standards for a particular topic or concept. And so that is the basics of topic number one. So at this point, if you just want to write a one word answer um, or anything, you could go longer than that. But my first question in the Google form, if you've pulled it up, is what concerns or interesting comments? It could be about the methodology. It could be about the idea. It could be about something that you think I should research that's not quite this topic, but you think I, if I do this, that would be where the money's at. Um, uh, what do you have in terms of comments to provide me with with respect to this topic? And so if you are interested in um, typing that, um, I'm going to move on to topic two for the sake of time, but you're welcome to come back also if you would like to, to fill that out at a different point. So topic number two, um, this is probably my favorite, um, and, and I think it's probably Greg's favorite because it's, it's his idea, to be honest. Um, it's a quantitative study, and it, it has to do with the effect of music on retention time of information. And so um, about five years ago, I started to make these songs, and some of those students you saw in the beginning are currently juniors in college. And they'll come back to me, and they will sing the entire song that I created for them. Um, and I find that absolutely fascinating. Um, five years later, it's not a song on the radio, but the second they start it, they know all the lyrics. And so the question is essentially, could I do a formal study um, that would validate these anecdotes of students who say that using music to learn will increase the amount of time that they retain this information? And so that's the basic idea of topic number two. And the setup, I'm going to purposefully attempt to shape this so that it would be able to be used in secondary uh, high school settings. And so one of the things that we come across as, as high school public ed teachers is, you know, I, I don't want to um, have periods one, three, and five be taught with music but periods two, four, and six be taught without. And so instead of making the students the treatment in a particular class period, we would make the treatment essentially the topics that receive music and the topics that don't receive music. And so you're going to set up um, that all the classes get taught in, a, in the same manner, but different topics would then be the treatment. And so that is talked about here. and. Um, you would randomize which topics um, throughout the entire curriculum. You would have to try to sprinkle those throughout uh, the length of the curriculum, the difficulty, um, possibly talking about matching topics with respect to difficulty. And then um, the data would be taken um, initially as a pretest. Then you would teach the lesson either with or without music. And then you would the students would receive a post test at, at zero months roughly, and um, then they would continue to be retested as time went on. And you're going to compare the retention time of information of topics um, with respect to those that received the music instruction and those that did not. And so a possible um, hypothetical situation of data might be in the form of a decay curve where you're going to compare um, the curves of the students who received the music 
uh, I'm sorry, the, the treatment of the music with certain topics and those topics that did not actually uh, receive that treatment. So they lacked the music. Um, and so this, this would just be a potential hypothetical situation, but one way to possibly address this situation. And so you're going to have the same question with respect to topic number two. If there's anything, any comment with respect to the methodology, the idea, do you like it? Do you dislike it? You can type anything into that um, box that you are interested in. And then we are just about ready to roll to topic number three. And so I'll give you a moment if you're typing um, and just a special shout out to my 2017-2018 uh, AP Chem class. I know you're watching and I also know that some of my seniors from last year are watching. Um, and we'll move on to topic three. So topic number three is to look um, more at the effect of music on student attitudes towards the, the the general science concept. So currently, there's actually a lot of research um, on something and its effect on student attitudes. And that's something you can fill in the blank with respect to anything. And so this topic would essentially study the effect, if there is any, of music on student atti attitudes towards science in general. And so, um, one of the things that you'd have to consider with respect to this particular topic is that it would have to be relatively short term. It would have to be probably at most over the course of a year class. And so you, you would probably lose those students as time went on, they'd move on and go somewhere else and move on with their own lives. So probably a short term study would best benefit this particular topic. But one advantage to this topic um, would be that you could use an already created tool or instrument to collect your data, maybe something that someone else has used um, that has been known to measure student attitudes. So that would be one particular advantage of this particular study. And the setup would require sort of pairing classes either into those that received um, instruction with music or those that received no, in, no instruction with music, or I should say it probably no music with instruction would be a better way of stating that. Um, and so you, this one would actually require the students to be the treatment and be separated into those two groups. And the data for this one would be students in both groups would then complete a survey regarding their attitudes towards science in general at regular intervals throughout the entire class. Both groups would do this, and then the data of the two groups regarding student attitudes would be compared to each other. And so that brings me to the end of topic number three. And so topic number three, it's the same question. Um, what concerns or interesting comments do you have regarding this particular topic? So if there's anything about uh, recommendations, concerns, methodologies, feel free to put that in the box. And then finally, but uh, last and but definitely not least, I have three extra questions. And these questions um, are especially for those people who have gone through this crazy process of a dissertation before. Um, if you were in my shoes, which of these three topics that I discussed would you pick for me to do? Um, so Again, it's not for you, but it's actually for me. I would be the one um, doing the study. And then, so that one is going to actually be a, a checkbox. So you, you have to pick one of those three. And then the next question, question five, briefly state your rationale as to why you decided to pick that particular topic one, topic two, or topic three. Um, of those choices. It could be simply opinion, interest, um, or anything. And then finally, um, this is especially for all of those PhDs out there. Um, if you were going to give me your own idea for me to do a dissertation, is there something that I have not highlighted? So is there essentially, um, is there a topic you think that I should really be looking into that sounds really interesting with respect to the concept or the field of STEM and music.
And so that is my presentation about dissertations. And I'm certain it was probably the one that didn't have any music in it, but hopefully um, maybe I will have a singing dissertation in about three to three and a half years. So that is it. Thank you all so much for uh, your participation. And I am going to unshare my screen um, and go check the chat. All right. Thank you, Tiffany. Um, so we, we have had a couple of questions roll in. So uh, I encourage you to read those and respond to them. I see one from Jeff, who I, I think was concerned about um, the, the um, retention time study. What if some topics are just harder than others? And then Larry has one about attitudes and anxiety. Yeah, actually, um, I, I do have an idea for, for Jeff's question, which is to actually possibly separate the classes into two. Um, so like, but what would happen is that they, the classes, you would switch the ones that you do a, a baseline study, um, like a diagnostic test at the beginning to, to, as a start point, but then you're going to, um, so like if, if, periods one, three, and five, they get the song topics on, let's just say like the, the odd topics. They would be the baseline for the other class that would actually get the song topics on the opposite. So that's one thing, it's, a, it's a, some type of matching experiment, um, but I can definitely look into that. That's definitely a good point. Um, but I know we're running tight on time, so I will also, um, try to answer anything as quickly as possible or um, get back to somebody if, if that's an issue. 